Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. It is Thursday, January 21st, and here's a quick look what's coming up. Tonight, the good people of Flint, Michigan, find out the hard way that there truly is poison in their water. And breaking down a pro-Obama meme. That's next. And there's a meme that's very popular right now, and it says, you still have your guns, you don't live in FEMA camps, you don't have government implants, and you don't live under Sharia law. There's still no such thing as a death panel. Gay marriage hasn't ruined the country. You've seen the birth certificate, and he still hasn't risen as the Antichrist. Do you feel like a dumbass yet? But that's called the death panel. Uh, and you're not supposed to have that discussion. If I could have gotten 51 votes in the Senate of the United States for an outright ban, picking up every one of them. Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water, pairing the unprecedented super filtration power of an all-new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell. It removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants and hormones filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons stainless steel construction easy assembly low maintenance replacement filters are simple to install and now as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping this is a limited time offer so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off go to infowarsstore.com or call 888-253-3139 well, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty much getting sick and tired of the Obama administration and liberals in general, for that matter, always telling us to relax and calm down because nobody's taking our guns, right? In fact, I ran across a meme the other day on Facebook. Only in the land of idiocracy would somebody post something like this, but here you go. I'll read it to you right now. They walk among us, ladies and gentlemen. This is a Facebook post that's being passed around by zombies on social media. They're talking about Barack Obama after seven years in the White House. Seven years later, and you still have your guns. You don't live in a FEMA camp. You don't have government implants. And you don't live under Sharia law. There's still no such thing as a death panel. Gay marriage hasn't ruined the country. You've seen the birth certificate. And he still hasn't risen as the Antichrist. Do you feel like a dumbass yet? No, but you should feel like a dumbass for posting this garbage. I mean, this is how stupid a large percentage of the American population has become. Because if you agree with this meme and you're sharing it with your friends on social media, well, you are the definition of a libtard, right? Now, I want to go through the bullet points here in a minute, but let's start with the number one thing that you usually hear from liberals, and the number one just happens to be the number one item on this list, nobody is taking your guns. When y'all go home and you're talking to your buddies and they say, ah, oh, he wants to take my gun away. You've heard it here, I'm on television, so everybody knows it. I believe in the Second Amendment. I believe in people's lawful right to bear arms. I will not take your shotgun away. I will not take your rifle away. I won't take your handgun away. So there you go. You heard the president. Nobody is going to take your guns. They're just going to take away your ammo and your high capacity magazines, and they're not going to allow you to own any assault rifles. But I also believe that a lot of gun owners would agree that AK-47s belong in the hands of soldiers, not in the hands of criminals. They are going to make you register all of your guns, and they are restricting transfers. For example, my dad gave me a rifle that I would like to hand down to my son one day. But if Obama gets his way, that's going to be very, very difficult. And they're also doing everything they can to keep us from carrying guns. And there's always someone out there who says, what do you guys have to worry about? You're in Texas. You're allowed to carry guns. They don't mess with Texas. 
Well, that might be true, but I tell you what, we sure had to fight for the right to open carry. There are plenty of liberals, trust me, in Texas who want us totally disarmed. And I'm not just a Texan, I'm an American, damn it. And I think we all have the right to protect ourselves and protect our families, no matter what state we live in or what state we might be traveling to at the time, right? Besides that, the Second Amendment, it's not just about protecting our families, and it's definitely not about hunting and fishing or shooting for sport. No, the Second Amendment is there as a safeguard to protect us from a tyrannical government. You know the words, sing along. You know, the right to bear arms is because that's the last form of defense against tyranny. See there, even Ice-T gets it. Look, they want to ban ammo, they want to ban assault rifles, and everything else that gives the Second Amendment real meaning. And now they're even going as far as recommending that you have RFID tracking on guns, or fingerprint access, or even require you to wear a bracelet in order for you to have access to your weapon. Vice President Biden and I had um, a meeting with a group of technology people and talked about how um, guns can be made more safe by making them either through fingerprint identification, um, the gun talks to a, a bracelet or something that you might wear, um, how guns can be used only by the person who is uh, lawfully in um, possession of, of the weapon. If there's an app that can help us find a missing tablet, your iPad, there's no reason we can't do it with a stolen gun. So we're going to advance research. We're going to work with the private sector to update firearms technology. So there you go. And by the way, if they catch you violating any of these new rules, they will throw your ass in prison, at which point they will come and take all of your guns. So just because this isn't happening overnight doesn't mean it ain't happening. All right. Now, I want to show a picture to you right now. This is a picture. Most of you have seen this. This is a statue right outside of the UN building in New York. It is a bronze sculpture of a Colt 357 revolver with the barrel tied in a knot. Look at that. And also you notice the muzzle is pointing upwards. You know, it's, it's really no secret that the globalists at the UN, they have every intent to disarm the American population. This is something that they've been planning for a very, very long time. We've showed you the UN Arms Treaty and the State Department Memorandum where it says that the United Nations will oversee the complete disarmament of the American people, including small arms and light weapons. This is also reported by Forbes magazine. And now we are learning that Obama's next occupation after leaving the White House might be to head up the UN. I mean, how scary is that? Can you imagine Obama at the head of the United Nations? That is truly a nightmare scenario. I mean, they'll want to take guns away from everyone, but the military, the police, and the private bodyguards of the elite. So when they tell you nobody's out to get your guns, you tell them bullshit. All right. Now I want to quickly go back to that memo I showed you earlier, and we're going to go through the rest of the list. After seven years of Obama, you don't live in a FEMA camp. You don't have that much time to take away Americans' guns, declare martial law, and... <laughs> put hardworking Americans in FEMA camps. If you're going to do that, you better, better get, get started. You better get started. I have decided we really need camps for adults. And we need the kind of camps that you all run. I mean, really. They do investigations and say, oh, there are no FEMA camps. Because they're not called FEMA camps. They're called Emergency Centers Establishment Act. They're called Civilian Inmate Labor Camp Program. They're called Rex 84 Continuity of Government under National Police Stabilization Force, RAND Corporation. I'm just giving you bam, 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 the plan. After seven years of Obama, you don't have government implants. Well, I think Joe Biden said it best when he told Supreme Court Justice John Roberts that he will have to rule on microchip implants. Mark my words. And we'll be faced with equally consequential decisions in the 21st century. Can 
a microscopic tag being planted in a person's body to track his every movement. There's actual discussion about that. You will rule on that, mark my words, before your tenure is over. Seven years later, you don't live under Sharia law. Well, maybe not here in the United States, but I tell you what, it sure would suck to be a Christian in Libya or Syria right now, where the Obama administration has totally unleashed ISIS terrorists to do Washington's dirty work. We've shown you the secret Pentagon report that shows how the U.S. created ISIS to begin with as a tool to overthrow Syria's president, Bashar al-Assad, it's the same old game of divide and conquer. I've talked to you guys about this many times on this broadcast. The CIA arms radical extremists to destabilize a region as an excuse to go in and establish order out of chaos. We've seen the weapons drops. We've seen the Toyotas. Vladimir Putin knows what's going on. Rand Paul has talked about it, and so has Donald Trump. I mean, we wouldn't have an ISIS problem if the Obama administration would simply cut off their funding. They created that Frankenstein. And now there is a tsunami of Muslim immigrants flooding into Europe and the United States. And most of them are not three-year-old baby orphans, Obama. This is not an immigration. It is an invasion. Seven years later, and there's still no such thing as a death panel, unless, of course, you are a veteran who died waiting to see a doctor at the VA. Multiple sources tell CNN as many as 40 veterans died while they were waiting for medical care at this VA facility. Our sources tell us many were placed on a secret list designed by VA managers to hide the fact veterans were waiting months to see a doctor. But hey, we're not supposed to talk about that, right? Shh. Would it be better not to lay off the, those 10 teachers and to make that trade-off in medical costs? But that's called the death panel, uh, and you're not supposed to have that discussion. Seven years later, there can be no doubt that Obama was born in the USA. Why? Well, because you've seen his birth certificate. You know, the one that was heavily scrutinized and examined by a team of law enforcement experts in science labs where they concluded without a doubt that the birth certificate is one big fat forgery and a bad one at that. And I've sat and had a beer or two with Mike Zulo, who is the chief investigator of Sheriff Joe Arpaio's cold case posse. And he says that none of Obama's certificates and none of his records are authentic. I mean, he is a ghost president. Obama's records are sealed. We're not allowed to look at his college records, his thesis paper, his selective service registration, his Illinois State Senate records, none of it. They are off limits. And I'm telling you something, no president in the history of this country has ever been so secretive. Can you say Manchurian candidate? And finally, seven years later, and Obama still hasn't risen as the Antichrist. Well, let's give him some time, all right? I mean, he still might head up the UN one day. And I think the History Channel, they got it right when they made the devil from the Bible series look just like Barack Hussein Obama. Coincidence? I think not. If I could have gotten 51 votes in the Senate of the United States for an outright ban, picking up every one of them, Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in, I would have done it. But I also believe that a lot of gun owners would agree that AK-47s belong in the hands of soldiers, not in the hands of criminals. We just have to be repetitive about this. It's not enough to simply have a, a catchy ad on a Monday and then only do it every Monday. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. Enough. 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 Mayor Bloomberg, how are you doing? Jason, I grew up in Brooklyn. In the spirit of gun control, will you disarm your entire security team? Uh, you will think, get right back to you. You'll get back to me? They may feel that it's part of uh, a romanticized culture. There's, there's, a, there's an aspect of this, a kind of wild...